Welcome to 5 Minutes in the Word, a daily devotional in the Word of God. Welcome back to 5 Minutes in the Word, and today we're going to continue our study in Acts chapter 2, starting in verse 14. But before we get there, I want us to remind ourselves that last time we were talking about the giving of the Holy Spirit to the apostles, uh, them to begin to speak in tongues, and how the people in the city, how they reacted. They were amazed. They were shocked. They were confused. Some, yes, were mocking, but here they wanted to know. They want to know how this is possible. Whatever could this mean? And so that is going to bring us to what we're going to hear today as a sermon that is delivered, as some would say, the first gospel sermon. Uh, We're going to hear, uh, speaking of uh, from the words of Peter here, starting here in verse 14, this is going to be a lengthy reading today, so I ask you, please, bear with us as we read this lesson together. We're going to first read down uh, from verse 14 all the way down uh, to uh, probably verse uh, 36, uh, and then we're going to, uh, or through verse 36, and then we'll stop and, and make a few uh, comments uh, along the way. Starting in verse 14, but Peter, but Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words, for these are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last day, days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And all my men servants and maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heavens above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor and smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves also know, Uh, him being delivered by the determined purpose and foreknowledge of God, you have taken by lawless hands, have crucified and put to death, uh, whom God raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be held by it. For David says concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is at my right hand that I should not Uh, be shaken. Therefore, my heart rejoiced and my tongue was glad. Moreover, my flesh also will rest uh, in hope for you will not leave my soul in Hades, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of joy in your presence. Men and brethren, let me speak freely to you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his body, according to the flesh, he would raise up the Christ to sit on his throne. He foreseeing this spoke concerning the resurrection of the Christ, that his soul was not left in Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God has raised up with a witch, We are all witnesses, therefore being exalted to the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this which you now see and hear. For David did not ascend into the heaven, but he himself, uh, he says himself, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified both Lord and Christ. Wow. This was a lesson. This is, as we call it, the first gospel sermon, but what a powerful lesson this was in answering to their question. How is this possible? What is going on? How are these men able to do this? He starts by talking about the prophecy, the prophecy of the Holy Spirit being poured on them, the prophecy of prophesying, of of, of this of transpiring, but then going on and talking about Jesus and talking about how his uh, death and his, his burial and his resurrection resurrection have brought all of this about that how the Jesus it was foretold he was not going to uh, waste away in Hades how he was going to come back he was going to be raised uh, that he was going to to die yes for a purpose but he was going to be raised for a purpose and it is that Jesus who this sermon continues to point right back to for these men and brethren for really us today to understand that Jesus is 
the Christ, the son of the living God. That is something that we all need to know. We need to understand. And that is what Peter is preaching to them about. He is preaching to them about the death, about the burial, about the resurrection of Jesus. He is preaching about the for, uh, the fulfillment of prophecy as God has uh, given to them. And as we hear from the Holy Scriptures, uh, the what is to come, that God is consistent in his promises. And so he, he reminds them of the promises of God. He reminds them of the Messiah. He reminds them of the Christ. And then he says, this Jesus, this Jesus, it says, whom you crucified, that God has done what? This Jesus, whom you crucified, has made him both Lord and Christ. Now that message, it cut them to the heart. I hope it cuts us to the heart as well. But this was their response. And I think we can learn a lot from this, starting in verse 37. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? They recognized what they had done. They recognized who he was and they recognized there was something that now needs to be done. And so they ask, what shall we do? Verse 38, then Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy spirit for the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are far off, as many as to the Lord, our God will call. This was an amazing lesson and was followed up by an amazing response. And we're going to see in, in, a, in a, later, a later episode just talking about you know how many people responded. But I want you to see this. The response I want you to first see is that they were cut to the heart. And that is what the Word of God does. The Word of God, it cuts to the heart. And the word of God helps reveal all that we are lacking and all that we are missing, but it also helps show us exactly what we need. And that has been provided to us by our God, by Jesus Christ, by his death, burial, and resurrection. And we get to read about it in his holy word. And so let us, just like these people, let us respond to the word of God. And let's continually ask, what do we need to do? If we are outside of Christ, what do we need to do? Peter answered right here, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. That is what we need to do. But if we're in Christ, what do we need to do? We need to come back to God. We need to continue to grow in him. We need to live for him each and every day, continuing to teach his word, continuing to preach Christ and him crucified, which was what we see here within this sermon, the first gospel sermon. You're going to see preaching Christ and him crucified, preaching about that resurrected Savior to understand that we serve a God, that that tomb was empty, that he raised from uh, fr rose from the grave, uh, and now reigns in heaven above. And so each day, let us all, let's learn from this lesson. Let's learn from this sermon. And don't just take what happened that day, but use it now to transform our lives and let us all continue to choose God.